Hey guys, thanks for joining my YouTube channel and thanks for tuning in to watch our video for the day. Uh, so today we're going to start going over a brand new packet. Uh, so you should have this packet at home. This is the packet scheduled for the week of April 20th. And we're going to start going over coordinate planes, ordered pairs, and also uh, patterns. Um, I'm super excited for this because I remember when we were doing this the first nine weeks of school, you guys really seem to have a lot of fun with this and like putting shapes on the coordinate plane and learning about the different um, axes, like the X axis and the Y axis. Um, we used some of our geometry knowledge to um, even put shapes on a coordinate plane and finish shapes on a coordinate plane and stuff like that. Uh, so we had a lot of fun with this and I hope you guys continue to have fun with this as we're reviewing it. Um, before we get started, since this is a new packet that we're going to be going over, I want to make sure that you have your math notebook with you and that you know which pages in here are going to give you a lot of good information to kind of help you answer these questions. Uh, so to start with, vocabulary always. Um, so if you look at the very top here, we've got coordinate plane, and that's what we're going to start going over um, with the first 10 questions in the video. So you can see here that a coordinate plane actually has what, uh, four different quadrants. That's what we call them. We call each section quadrants. In fifth grade, we're only focusing on one quadrant. It's the one that we have um, circled right here and also colored in green. And we mainly focus on that quadrant because the x-axis and the y-axis have digits that are positive numbers. The other three quadrants, quadrant two, three, and four, you're gonna work with those in middle school coming up at the end of the school year. Um, and you'll do that in middle school because for those quadrants, the X and Y axis are gonna have some negative numbers. And in sixth grade, that's really when you start working with negative numbers. Uh, so you will see coordinate planes again next year. Super duper fun. Uh, we've also got our origin. So remember, we always start at the origin. The origin is where the X and Y axis intersect each other. And the origin has the ordered pair, zero comma zero. Uh, we have ordered pairs. So like for this example, two comma eight, that shows you the location of a point on the coordinate plane. The first digit is for your X axis and the second digit is for your Y axis. And then of course our last uh, term here, that just shows you the one quadrant in fifth grade that we're gonna be focusing on and that's quadrant number one. Um, so that's a lot of your coordinate plane vocabulary. We have other important things that we'll be going over, uh, like patterns, um, you know, trying to determine the rule between corresponding X and Y values and stuff like that. Um, and that's going to kind of come towards the end of the video. So as we come to those types of questions, I will, you know, certainly go over more vocabulary with you and stuff that you need to remember. Uh, for right now, that vocabulary I just showed you should be a pretty good start. Uh, some other places in your notebook that you can turn to. This one right here was a coordinate plane that we did uh, just practicing writing the location of each type of flower. So writing down the ordered pairs using the X and Y axis. Um, let's see. Here also, this is where we started kind of writing out the directions. So if you flip this up, we practice writing directions. So you'll notice it says, you know, start at the origin move right eight units, then move up nine units, and that takes you to this order pair, eight comma nine. And you're certainly gonna see that again. Uh, so when you're writing directions about how to move on a coordinate plane, remember we always start at the origin unless the word problem tells us otherwise. Okay, so if the word problem says, you know, start at Jimmy's house and give me the directions from Jimmy's house to Forest Hill Elementary, if Jimmy's house is not at the origin, that's okay. We're going to start there anyways, whatever the ordered pair may be for Jimmy's house. Uh, so in that case, you know, you wouldn't start at the origin. But most of the time, unless the word problem specifically tells you otherwise, we always start at the origin, which is zero comma zero. Um, and we did practice some of those directions here. So we have some of our different uh, letters here on the coordinate plane. And we have to write the directions from one letter to another letter. So we practice, you know, what are the directions on how we move on a coordinate plane when we don't start at the origin. So you have some of those examples in your notebook. And then as I kind of flip through here, 
We've got, you know, plotting shapes. Oops, sorry. That's, there we go. Uh, plotting shapes on the coordinate plane. So pulling in some of our uh, geometry terms like right triangle, right trapezoid, square, rectangle, rhombus. You're going to see all of that in this review packet. Um, let's see. Uh, finishing a shape. We did task cards like this in class, and we went over those. So you've got lots of good examples here um, in your math notebook. Let's see. Um, and then when we start getting into patterns, which we will get into some patterns during this video, you've got your own little anchor chart here, types of patterns. Okay. So I know I'm going through this quickly, but you have all of this in your notebook. Uh, here's where we started kind of going over function tables. So you're given, you know, two different patterns, make a function table of your X and Y coordinates, make your ordered pairs, and then put those ordered pairs over here on the coordinate plane. And we will be doing lots of function tables during this 50-question um, review packet. So yeah, you've got tons and tons and tons of different function tables in here, uh, practicing how to make a rule, understanding that, you know, corresponding basically just means what is the relationship between the X and Y values. So like, what are you doing to the X number to get the Y number? Or it could be the other way around. What did you do to the Y number to get the X number? So remember with patterns, it's not always going to be, you know, here's the patterns for the X coordinates and here's the pattern for the Y coordinates. It could be a corresponding pattern, which is what did you do to X to get Y or what did you do to Y to get X? Um, so we could have corresponding patterns as well. Um, let's see. And then, yeah, from here on out, you've got lots of function tables in here and coordinate planes, also some function tables and some line graphs, some of which we even found, you know, two-step rules like this one, where the rule was to add 10 and then subtract 5. Okay, so I'm not going to go through um, all of these pages in your notebook, but just know that you do have tons of different pages in your notebook here that cover what's in this review packet. Um, and again, this review packet is coordinate planes, ordered pairs, and also patterns. So not only, you know, identifying patterns, but making function tables based on the ordered pairs that you see in a coordinate plane. That way you can see it in the function table, you know, see the numbers you're working with, the order pairs, and then kind of determine the pattern from there. Um, and we will kind of get into that in this video. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and get started with question number one, and we'll be covering questions one through 10 in this video. Okay. All right, so let's go ahead and start here with question number one. Now that I've shown you all that, I'm going to make myself a little bit smaller here so we've got some workspace. Uh, so remember, follow along, show your work. Um, you know, the great thing about having that paper packet at home is that you can use your pencil, pen, highlighter, you know, whatever writing utensil you have, and you can actually write directly on the coordinate plane, which I think is super duper helpful. All right, question number one, pretty simple. Which shape is at four comma one? All right, so four comma one, that is your ordered pair. So four comma one. Oops, sorry, that's supposed to be a parenthesis. Let me try that again. That was a little sloppy. There we go. All right, so that's my ordered pair inside parentheses here. Uh, so remember, your four, that is your X coordinate, and that follows along this X axis right here at the bottom of our coordinate plane. And then this one here, that is your Y coordinate, and that is for your Y axis, which is your vertical axis on the coordinate plane, and it intersects your X axis. And they intersect at what is called the origin. Here's your origin. And remember, the origin has an ordered pair. It is zero, comma, zero. Uh, so you really don't necessarily, you know, need the origin for this one, but it is good to know that we always, you know, start here at the origin. And then what direction do we move in when we're finding the location of something on a coordinate plane? Think about Super Mario. Remember, when you're playing a Super Mario video game, oftentimes he's going to run and then he's going to jump. And that's what we want to do here on the coordinate plane. We want to run, and the only direction we can run in, starting at the origin, is to the right. So we want to run to the right, to the number four here, and then that's your x-coordinate. And then we want to jump up 
one on your Y coordinate, and that'll take you to the correct shape. All right, so we're gonna start here at the origin. We're gonna move to the right first. And how many units are we gonna move to the right? Well, that would be four because this is our X axis. Four is your X coordinate. So we're gonna count over to the right four units. And a unit, that just means like a block here, one of these squares. So that's one, two, three, four. All right, that takes care of our X coordinate. Now we need to jump up for our Y coordinate. And how many units do we jump up? just one because that's our y coordinate so i jump up one unit one block one square one and then i'm done so what shape does that take me to that takes me right here to the rectangle uh, so for number one a was the correct answer and just for fun here what are the order pairs for these other shapes go ahead and write those down on your packet that you're following along with at home a little bit of extra practice certainly won't kill you right um so let's talk about the heart what's the ordered pair for the heart so we're gonna go right one up four so that would be one comma four uh the trapezoid here we would go right four up five so that's four comma five and then this green shape here this is a rhombus so we would go right six up seven so that is six comma seven all right so hopefully this is all coming back to you pretty quickly all right so i'm going to wipe my screen clear and let's go ahead and move on to question number two all right number two so same thing but instead of shapes we now have uh, points here with letters J, K, L, and M. So which plot on the graph has coordinates one comma three? So one comma three, these are your coordinates, also known as your ordered pair. So the one here, this is your X coordinate that goes along with your horizontal X axis here at the bottom. And then three, this is your Y coordinate. And that goes along here with your vertical Y axis on the coordinate plane. And then again, let's talk about the origin. Remember, that's where the X and Y axis, they intersect each other to make that right angle. So this right here would be your origin. And what's the ordered pair for the origin? It's zero comma zero because we moved right zero and up zero, right? We've not moved anywhere. So it's zero comma zero. All right. So let's figure out which one of these letters is at one comma three. All right. So one is my X coordinate. That means I'm going to run before I jump. So I'm going to run to the right, move to the right. How many units? One unit, because that's my X coordinate. One. Okay. So check that's done. Now I'm going to jump up for my, come on, pen. what you doing? There we go. It's a little delayed. Um, now we're going to jump up how many units on the y-axis? Well, three units, right? Because that's my y-coordinate. So I jump up three. One, two, three. And that takes me right here to the letter K. So one comma three is at point K. And then again, just for fun, like we did for number one, let's go ahead and label the others just to get in some good extra practice because this right here is really the basics. Um, so we wanna make sure we have this down first before we start having to you know, write down all the ordered pairs that we see, find a pattern, and then determine you know, what could be the next point on the coordinate plane or line graph. So let's make sure we are really good at this and have this down pat before we move on. Uh, so letter J, what would be the order pair for letter J. And one thing you guys can also do is pause the video, figure it out on your own, or go ahead and figure out all of them, and then restart the video, and then double check your work. That's a great way to kind of, you know, get in some of that independent practice, so it's like we're in the classroom. All right, so letter J, uh, we move to the right zero, we move up four, so that would be zero comma four, Letter K, we've already done, right? We said it was one comma three over here. Uh, letter L, we moved to the right three and up one. So that is three comma one. 
Remember that um, anchor chart we did in class that had the treasure map on it and you had to find like the coordinates of like the shark and the palm tree and the rock and the treasure chest and the, the wrecked ship and all of that stuff. That, that's exactly what this is. Um, all right. And then letter M, we move to the right four and here we didn't move up at all, right? The the point here is sitting directly on the x-axis so we didn't move up any just like for letter j we didn't move to the right any that means one of our coordinates is going to be zero so for m we moved right four and up zero so m would be four comma zero all right sound good okay let's go ahead and move on to question number three here come on computer there we go. All right, question number three. The points labeled C and D in the coordinate plane above represent the locations of Cindy's and Danielle's houses. The girls are meeting to play at the point that is halfway. I know that's going to be an important word, right? Halfway between their houses. What are the coordinates of the point where they met? All right, so... Sydney and Danielle, they're going to meet directly in the middle of where their houses are. But before I can tell you exactly, you know, what point is in the middle of their houses, I need to know where their houses are first located. So the first step here is going to be determining what are the order pairs for Cindy's and Danielle's houses. And then from there, we can use those order pairs to determine what is our halfway point right in between. Uh, so let's start with Cindy. What is the location of her house? What is the ordered pair? Well, for Sydney, uh, not Sydney, I'm sorry, Cindy, we're going to start at the origin. Here's the origin. And then remember, we want to run, so move to the right, and then we want to jump, move upwards. All right, so we're going to move to the right. How many units? That is just one because we can see now we're on the right um, vertical line here for where Cindy's house is going to be. So one, that's going to be your X coordinate. And then we need to move up how many units? One, two, three, four, five. So we moved up five. So Cindy's house is located at one comma five. Now let's do the same thing for Danielle. So again, we're gonna start at the origin. We're gonna move to the right and then we're gonna jump up. So start here, I need to go to Danielle's house. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There we go. So I know eight is going to be my X coordinate because that puts me on the right line here for Danielle. Now I need to move up how many units? So I start at eight, or actually I start at zero here and then go up. So that's one, two, three, four, five. All right. So Danielle's house is located at eight comma Five. All right, so what we want to know here is what is the halfway point between one comma five and eight comma five? Well, hopefully you see here that there's one thing these ordered pairs have in common. What's the one thing they have in common? Well, that's going to be the Y coordinate, right? We can see the Y coordinate for both of these is five. So that means our halfway point, whatever those ordered pairs may be, it's also going to have a y coordinate of five and here's the reason why here's the street the line the street that basically these two girls live on no matter whatever that halfway point is let's say it's here it's still going to have a y axis of five right let's say you know the x coordinate might be three but we're still going to have a y coordinate of five let's say the halfway point is right here well now we have an x coordinate of five but the y coordinate is still five. Let's say the halfway point is here. Now we have an x coordinate of seven, but look, the y coordinate is still five. So since you know the halfway point is gonna be somewhere on this street where Cindy and Danielle live, that means we're not changing this y coordinate over here, we're changing the x coordinate. So basically that means we need to know what number is halfway between one, this one right here, and eight. What number is halfway between one and eight? Well, I think the easiest way to figure this out is to draw a number line. Uh, so what I'm actually going to do here is I'm going to clear my entire screen off and then I'm going to make a number line to figure out what x coordinate is halfway in between one and eight. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and clear my screen here 
pause, write down anything that you need to. Okay. Um, all right. So here we go. So I want to know what number is halfway between one and eight. Well, what you could actually do if you wanted to is come down here and use this X axis because your axes on a coordinate plane or a line graph, they are essentially number lines, okay? Uh, now for me, you know, these numbers, they're very, very close together. So I think it would be really sloppy if I tried to do it here on the x-axis. That's why I'm gonna make my own number line. Uh, but you're welcome just to go ahead and use the x-axis as your pre-made number line to figure out what number is halfway between one and eight. Okay, so I'm going to clear that off here, and here we go. So I'm going to make a number line, and I'm going to make it rather long just to give myself some room to work here. All right, and I'm going to start by labeling a 1 at the beginning and an 8 at the end because this is basically my starting number and my ending number, and I just want to know what number comes halfway in the middle. Um, and I know some of you, you know, you might be, you know, saying, it's 4, it's 4. Well, that would be if we started at 0 and went to 8. Four is halfway between zero and eight. It changes the game a little bit when we want to know what's in between one and eight. Okay, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to label all the numbers between one and eight. So that's one, two, three, four, I'm sorry, five, six, and Seven. Okay. All right. So I've got all the numbers here labeled between one and eight. Now what I'm going to go in and do with a different color is I'm going to label some fractions and mixed numbers on here. And you might be saying, okay, why would she be doing that? Um, well, one, I already know the answer, <laughs> but um, because look at your answer choices. Okay, so you'll notice for your answer choices here, letter B says 3.5, that's three and a half. Letter C says 4.5, that's four and a half. So that means we could be looking at an X coordinate here that is a fraction or, you know, like a mixed number. Now, I know when we were first learning this at the very beginning of the school year, we didn't talk really about putting fractions um, and stuff like that on a coordinate plane, but that was because it was like, you know, the third week of school and we hadn't really talked about fractions and stuff like that. Uh, but now we've covered so much with fractions this year. I think we can all understand, you know, what comes in between zero and one one half, right? When we skip count, we say zero, one half, one, or you could even count by fourths and say zero, one fourth, one half, three fourths, uh, one, and stuff like that. Um, so now that we kind of understand that a little bit better, it makes it easier to label those fractions and mixed numbers um, on the number line here. And we've also talked about decimals and converting decimals into fractions, and so I think we're good to go here. All right, so what I'm going to do I'm going to leave that right there. I'm going to label some halfway points. Uh, so let's say I'm going to label right here, halfway in between one and two, that would be one and a half, right? As a decimal, that's 1.5. And then in between two and three, that would be two and a half, which is 2.5. And then we're going to continue in the same fashion. So between three and four, three and a half between four and five, four and a half, between five and six, five and a half. And you can label these as fractions if you wanted to, but since my answer choice has decimals, um, that's why I'm just gonna go ahead and write these as decimals. Uh, between six and seven, six and a half, and then between seven and eight is seven and a half, okay? Oh, why did I do that? Not 7.8, silly. Seven and a half. Sorry, I was looking at the eight and uh, my brain got ahead of me. There we go. Uh, so between seven and eight, that would be seven and a half. Okay, so now let's figure out what is the halfway point. So basically, what I'm going to be doing here is starting at one and every space I jump 
to the right here, I'm going to go over to the eight and I'm going to jump that same number of spaces over here to the left. So it's like I move right one, move left one, move right one, move left one until we get to that very middle spot uh, and we can't move right or left anymore because we have found that that middle ground. We have found that number um, that's in the middle. OK, so I'm going to go ahead and do that here. Let me get rid of that. 7.5. There we go. All right. So let's use that same color blue. All right. So I'm going to start here with one. And for the first move, I'm actually going to move just one hole. So I'm going to move all the way to two. So that means I'm going to come to my eight and move all the way to seven. Then I'm going to move one hole again, two to three. Come over here, move one hole again, seven to six. Looks like I can probably move one hole again. So move one hole, three to four. Move one hole, six to five. Now I can't move one hole from four to five. Five's already been marked, right? And I can't move backwards five to four because it's already been marked. So now I've got to do some smaller jumps. So I'm going to move half here and then I can move half here and I have nowhere else to go. So this is my middle right here. So it looks like my middle put me at 4.5 four and a half. Uh, so now we do have our ordered pair. Uh, remember we said our Y coordinate wasn't going to change. Our Y coordinate was going to be five because the halfway point is going to be on the same street as where Cindy and Danielle live. And now we know that our halfway point between an X coordinate of one and an X coordinate of eight would be 4.5. So 4.5 comes halfway between one and eight and now we have our ordered pair our ordered pair is four and a half comma five and so here the correct answer was c um so the only one it looks like we could have eliminated here would have been d d has an, a y coordinate of 3.5 and we know the y coordinate had to be five so i would have gotten rid of d but then you know it could have been a b or c so then you just had to know you know what's halfway between one and eight is it three three and a half or four and a half. And looking at our number line here, it is four and a half. So for number three, uh, C was the correct answer. All right, I'm gonna wipe my screen clear here and let's move on to number four. Oh, this is a fun one. I like this question. All right, number four, Amy, Bart, and Candace each went on a well watching trip. On the coordinate plane below, this is important. X represents the number of hours they spent whale watching, and Y represents the number of whales seen. Okay, so I don't think in class we really covered a problem like this one, but just think about it. The X numbers, it's kind of like a line graph, right? X is hours spent watching. Y is the number of whales watching. So we want to know which statement is true based on the points plotted on the grid. Uh, so what you're going to need to know here is the ordered pair for Amy, Bart, and Candace, and then using the digit for the X coordinate and the digit for the Y coordinate and the information they gave us up here in the word problem, we're going to figure out how many hours did they spend watching whales and what is the number of whales that they saw. Okay, uh, so to keep ourselves organized here, what I would do is label an A for Amy. So this will be all of Amy's stuff. I would label a B for Bart. So this will be all of Bart's stuff. And then I would label here a C for Candace, and this will be all the stuff for Candace. Okay, sound good? All right, so let's start with Amy, and we're going to start with figuring out what was her ordered pair. Because uh, the ordered pair, you know, we need the X term and the Y term so we can figure out, you know, which statement down here is true. So you're just figuring out the ordered pair. Um, all right, so the ordered pair, let's see, for Amy, well, it looks like we went to the right two, we went up four. So for Amy, her ordered pair is going to be two comma four. Uh, so what does that mean? Remember, two is your x, four is your y. So if x represents the number of hours spent while watching, that means she watched for two hours. So two hours, and then Y is the number of whales seen, so she saw four whales. So two hours, comma, and we'll put saw four. 
If I was writing this out with pencil and paper, I'd probably be a little bit more detailed right here in this section, but using a mouse on a keyboard, um, it's a little bit more difficult. But as long as you know, the X coordinate of two means that she watched whales for two hours, and the Y coordinate of four means that she saw four whales, I can maybe even put four W for four whales, uh, then you're good to go. So now we need to do that for Bart and Candace, and then we can come down here and very easily you know, figure out which one is the correct answer. So we're kind of making ourselves a little cheat sheet here. So then we can just go down and see which answer choice matches the information in our cheat sheet. All right, so now let's do BART. Uh, so ordered pair for BART, we need to go right three up four, okay? So his ordered pair is three comma four. So remember three is our X, four is our Y, so that means he watched whales for three hours, so three hours, and then Y is how many whales he saw, saw four W, saw four whales. He saw the same number of whales as Miss Amy up here. All right, and then let's do the same thing for Candace. So Candace, we go to the right two, up two, so her ordered pair would be two comma two. Uh, so that's two for X, two for Y. And that means she watched whales for two hours. And how many whales did she see? Saw two whales. Okay, now that we've got that information, we can come down here and basically just, you know, really easy process of elimination, figure out which one's true. Uh, so letter A, Bart saw three whales in four hours. Is that true? He saw three whales in four hours. No, he saw four whales in three hours. So no, that's not true. Letter B, Bart saw one more whale than Amy. Okay, so Bart saw four and Amy saw four. So no, they actually saw the exact same number of whales. So that's not true. Letter C, Amy and Bart saw the same number of whales. Amy saw four, Bart saw four. So yes, that is true. And then let's check letter D. Amy and Candace saw the same number of whales. Amy saw four. Candace saw two, so no, that's not true. So letter C here was the correct answer. So see, what we did there was just kind of take the information we were given, put it in this nice little cheat sheet, and then we could very easily come down here and do process of elimination. Now, did you have to make this cheat sheet over here? Of course not, but I think it was so much easier just to do it this way. Uh, so we weren't having to, you know, continuously go back to the coordinate plane and go, okay, what was that again? What was that number? We put the numbers in a very easy format, kind of like a table over here for us to read and make sense of, and then we could process of elimination our answer choices and determine the correct answer. Uh, so I think that was a good strategy here. All right, so number four, I'm going to clear my screen, and question number five. All right, number five, some numbers for, wait, I'm sorry, let me try that again. Some numbers from a number pattern are graphed in the coordinate plane above. Ooh, okay, here we go. Number pattern. So remember, uh, I know it's been a while, but in the first nine weeks, what was it that you guys were saying? Every single time I read a question and it said number pattern, your response was always what? Two magical words. Two magical, beautiful words that are so much fun. Number pattern. Usually that means you're going to be making a what? You're going to be making a function table. I'm not going to spell that out on my mat, so I'll put fun T. <laughs> We're going to make a fun T. We're going to make a function table. Uh, usually anytime that you're told that you have a number pattern, the easiest way to figuring out that number pattern so that you can eventually determine future ordered pairs in that pattern is to make a function table. Uh, so we want to know if the pattern in the graph continues, what is the number of patients who will vi visit the doctor's office on day five in January? Uh, so yeah, you are certainly going to want to make a function table here. Uh, so with our function table, we're going to start with X, draw a line down the middle, 
and then y and then what we're going to do is fill in the x and y coordinates and where do those x and y coordinates come from well they come from right over here in the coordinate plane you have the x and y coordinates they were just given to you in a line graph or a coordinate plane so we just have to take the ordered pairs from those black dots put them in the function table determine what the pattern is and then once we find the pattern we can use that pattern to determine the number of patients who will visit the doctor's office on that fifth day all right so let's start with right here this very first dot so we always do our x-axis first and then our y-axis so your x term it looks like is one because it's the you know whatever comes right here in between zero and two which would be one so that's one and your y coordinate is right here in between the two and the four and that would be three so that's going to be one comma three okay and then let's try the next one looks like your ordered pair is two comma five so yes we do have some hidden numbers on there but after doing that line graphs packet last week you guys should be experts at this all right so that took care of that black dot Let's go to the next one. So that is, it looks like three right here between the two and the four, three comma seven, three comma seven. And then the last one we've got, looks like four. Yeah, that's four comma nine. 4 comma 9. All right, so we've got 1 comma 3, 2 comma 5, 3 comma 7, 4 comma 9. What we want to know to continue our function table is the number of patients that will visit the doctor's office on day 5. So we know x is going to be 5 because that's going to represent the fifth day because look right here, that's what your x numbers mean. It means day, but we need to know the number of patients. So we're trying to figure out what is going to be that corresponding y value. Uh, so what we want to do here is we want to look for a pattern. Uh, so we can look for a pattern with the x and y coordinates, or we could even look for a corresponding pattern between the x and the y coordinates. Well, the corresponding pattern, that's actually going to be our next question. Uh, so for this one, I want you to figure out what is the rule for the x coordinates and what is the rule for the y coordinates. Uh, so what's the rule for the x coordinates? What are we doing over here to get all of these x terms? Okay, so the rule over here is we are just simply adding one, right? One plus one is two, two plus one is three, three plus one and four, and four plus one is five. So for the x column here, we're adding one. What's going to be our rule over here for the y column? So what did I do to three to get five? What did I do to five to get seven? What did I do to seven to get nine? So the rule over here is going to be to add to see the numbers are getting bigger we're either going to add or multiply it looks like we're going to add two three plus two is five five plus two is seven seven plus two is nine and now we can use that nine and use our rule right here to figure out what is going to be the corresponding y value for day five so nine plus two that's what that's 11, so that means on the fifth day, we're gonna have 11 patients who visit the doctor's office, so the correct answer was B. Okay, and we're gonna be doing this for a lot of questions here. We're going to be, you know, taking the order pairs from the coordinate plane, putting them in a function table, determining the rules for our function table, whether it be X and Y rules or even corresponding patterns between X and Y, and then determining a future ordered pair that follows the rule in that function table. Uh, so you're gonna see that in a lot of questions here. Okay, uh, so what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to just erase a few things here because for the next question, you're going to need that exact same function table. So I don't want to erase that. Okay, and while I'm doing this, you could even go ahead and copy down that function table for the next question, uh, or you could leave it, you know, and just use that same one, whichever you prefer. But I want to get some of this stuff off here so it's not blocking the next question oh and my computer's about to die that is not good all right friends so let's go ahead and move on to the next question here all right so question number six 
All right, so for question number six, it says we're gonna use the function table from question number five. Here's the function table from question number five. That's why I didn't erase it. Uh, so what we wanna do here is identify the rule between the corresponding X and Y values. Okay, so what we wanna do for this one, we wanna find the corresponding corresponding pattern or relationship between the X and Y values. And what that means is, you know, we're not just looking for here's the rule for all the X terms, like add one, or here's the rule for all the Y terms, like add two. Instead, what we wanna know is what can you do to this number for X, which is one, in order to get the number three, okay? Well, that's simple. You would say add two, right? Because one plus two is three. Well, that's true, but when we try that rule down here for the next set of terms, if I take the X term here, which is two, and I add two to it, I get four, but here it says that Y is five, not four. So that means it's not just gonna be, you know, a simple rule like add two. You know, sometimes it is, but you know, in this case, it's gonna be a little bit more complex than that. Uh, so we do have some answer choices over here. So the best thing for you to do is to test out your answer choices and figure out, you know, what did we do to X to get Y or what did we do to Y to get X? So it looks like over here for your answer choices, they're wanting you to do something to the X X in order to equal Y. So that's what we're going to do. So we're going to start with letter A right here. Letter A is 3X plus 1 equals y. So to figure out if that's going to be the correct corresponding rule between the x and y values, we just need to test it out. So we're going to replace x with 1 and y with 3 to see if the statement is true. So 3 x is 1. Now, don't just put a 1 here, okay, because that says 31, right, and it's not 31. The 3 is a coefficient for your x term. So, what I would do is put that x term, which is 1, in parentheses, 1 plus 1, and that is supposed to equal y. So, let's see if that does equal y, which is 3. Well, 3 times 1 is 3, 3 plus 1 is 4, so that says that y is going to equal 4. Is that true? No. Y is supposed to equal 3, so that's not going to be my rule, okay? So now we're going to test out letter B here, and I'm going to use red for letter B. Uh, so letter B says 2x plus 1 equals y, so 2x plus 1 equals y. Now remember that 2 right here is acting as a coefficient for the x term and the x term is still 1. We're going to stick with this very first um, order pair right here until we find something that works. All right, so now I'm just going to fill in the x and the, excuse me, I'm going to fill in the x and the y. So 2 x is 1. I'm going to put that in parentheses so I can let my coefficient here do its thing plus one, and that is supposed to equal y, which is three. So let's see if it does. Uh, so two times one is two, two plus one is three, so y equals three, and that's what it was supposed to equal. Very good, so now we're gonna try it with the next ordered pair, two comma five. Okay, so this time I'm gonna do it, um, I'll do it a different color so we can keep it organized. So we're gonna use the same rule, 2x plus 1 equals y, but now we're testing it out with the next ordered pair, 2 comma 5, to see if the rule will still work. So again, that's 2x plus 1 equals y, so that would be 2, x is now 2, so I'm going to put that in parentheses, plus 1, and that is supposed to equal y, which is 5. So 2 times 2 is 4, 4 plus 1 is 5, so y would be equal to 5. And look, here y is 5, so that's good, that works. Uh, let's test it out one more time just to be sure. So now we're going to test it out with the next ordered pair here, 3 comma 7. So we're using that same rule, 2x plus 1 equals y. It worked with 1 comma 3. It worked with 2 comma 5. Let's see if it also works with 3 comma 7. So that's going to be 2 as a coefficient, and then my x term is 3 plus 1, 
and that should equal my y value of 7. Let's see if it does. Uh, so 2 times 3 is 6. 6 plus 1 is 7. And y is 7. So there you go. It works. Uh, so it looks like b here is going to be our answer. Um, so what I want to do is just go ahead and show you c and d and how they're not going to be the right answer. Uh, so letter c says 3x minus 1 and that's going to equal y. So let's try that with 1 comma 3. So 3 is the coefficient. x is 1 minus 1, and that's supposed to equal y, which is 3. Well, let's see if it does. Uh, so 3 times 1 is 3. 3 minus 1 is 2. So according to this, y equals 2, but y is supposed to equal 3. So that doesn't work. And then let's test out letter d. Uh, so letter D says 2x minus 1 equals y. Uh, so again, 2 is a coefficient. I'm going to put in my x value, which is 1 minus 1, and that's supposed to equal y, which is 3. Let's see if it does. Uh, 2 times 1 is 2. 2 minus 1 is 1, so according to this rule, y is equal to 1 whenever x is 1, and that's not what it says over here. When x is 1, y is supposed to be 3, not 1, so d doesn't work either. Uh, so b, 2x plus 1 equals y, that was the only corresponding rule between the x and y values that did work whenever we plugged in our x term and our y term. And remember, that 2 there was acting as a coefficient, uh, a number in front of a variable or in front of a set of parentheses that always means to multiply. And this is why I really encourage you guys to do the packets in the order that I give them to you because we did cover all of this in the last video uh, when we talked about line graphs and stuff like that. Uh, so if you didn't, that's okay, but you know, it's not too late. You can always go back and start doing the, um, the line graphs packet because we covered all of this in those videos, okay? All right, so correct answer here is B. I'm going to clear my screen and move on to question seven. Oh, I love these. I love anything that has like geometry to it. All right, so which point is inside triangle MPQ? All right, so MPQ is the name of this triangle here. Um, so you don't have to draw the triangle, make it, nothing like that. They gave it to you. We just want to know which one of these points here is going to be inside this triangle. And there's only two points inside the entire triangle. It's this one and this one. So it's going to have to be, you know, one of these two points right here. So you have a couple options. You can either take all four of these answer choices and you can test them out and figure out which one's gonna fall inside this triangle, or since these are the only two points that actually are inside of the triangle, you could just write the ordered pairs for those two points and then just pick whichever one is an answer choice over here. Uh, so either way, it's gonna give you the correct answer. I'm gonna do it this way. These are the only points inside the triangle. So I'm gonna start with the first point here, and its ordered pair is gonna be two. So I go right two up three. So that first one is two comma three. And then for the second one, I'll put it here in the darker blue. Here's the second point. Its ordered pair, so start at zero, go right three, up three. Its ordered pair is three comma three. So see, those are the only two points inside the triangle. The rest of these, you know, they might be like you know, 2.67, you know, but we're not, we're not getting into all that stuff right now. Uh, so these are the only two you need to worry about. So which one is an answer choice? Uh, two comma three. So we see two comma three right here is letter A. Three comma three is not an answer choice. So it looks like this was the point inside the triangle that they wanted. So A was the correct answer. Okay, so there's nothing wrong with testing out all four answer choices, but when I look inside that triangle and I only see two points, you know, doing it the way I just did, I'm only testing out two answer choices really instead of all four because I know it had to be one of those two, so I labeled both of those with their ordered pair and then just matched it up to my answer choices. Uh, so A here for number seven is the correct answer. All right, number eight. Ooh, I like these. All right, 
An input output table, that's just another type of function table. All right, so for number eight, two rules for creating number patterns are given below. Each rule begins with a number called the input and creates the number called the output. So rule number one, multiply the input by two, then add three to get the result, to get the output. Okay, so we're going to multiply by two, add three. So over here, I'm just going to make myself a little note. X2, multiply by two, then we're going to add three. Okay, so that's what you're going to do to the input in order to get the output okay multiply by two add three and then for the other one rule two multiply the input by three then add one to get the result to get the output so for rule number two it says you're going to multiply three then you're going to add one so that's what you're going to do to the input so you're going to start with the input multiply by three and add one and that should give you the output and we want to know which input and output table works for both rules. Okay, so for this one, you are going to have to test out your answer choices. Uh, so let's start with letter A. Let's start with rule one. If it works, then we'll test out rule two. And if both of them work, then, you know, we probably have our answer. Uh, so for letter A here, the input is two. So rule one says we're going to multiply by two and add three to get the output of seven. So two times two is four. Four plus three is seven. Okay, so rule number one works. What about rule number two? Uh, so we're going to do times three, add one. Two times three is six. Six plus one is seven. Okay, so it looks like A is probably going to be our, our answer. Let's try out letter B. The input is three and the output is ten. So to start with rule one, we're going to take our input of three. Three times two is six. 6 plus 3 is 9, and it's supposed to be 10. So see, that doesn't work. So I don't even need to try rule 2, right? Because the, the question says it has to work for both rules. So it has to work for rule 1 and rule 2. Uh, letter C, the input is 4, and the output is 11. So let's start with rule 1 times 2, add 3. 4 times 2 is 8. 8 plus 3 is 11. Okay, so rule 1 worked. What about rule 2 times 3 plus 1? 4 times 3 is 12. 12 plus 1, 13. Yep, not going to work. Needs to be 11. And then letter D, the input is 5. The output is 13. So let's try rule 1. Uh, so rule 1 is times 2 plus 3. So 5 times 2 is 10. 10 plus 3 is 13. Okay, rule 1 worked. Let's try number 2 here. Uh, times 3 add 1. 5 times 3 is 15. 15 plus 1 is 16. So yep, that's not going to work. Uh, so just kind of, you know, testing out our answer choices there for both rules we were given. A is the only one where rule 1 and rule 2 both are going to work for that specific input output table. So really just think of that as your input is your X, which is two. Your output is Y, which is seven. And both of these rules, this is your corresponding relationship. So rule one and rule two, this is what you can do to X in order to get Y. Instead, they just gave you an input output table instead of a function table. But that's okay. They're basically the same thing. All right. So a couple more here. All right. Number nine. Ooh, this is a direction one. I love these. All right, so point M is located at 6, 7 on the coordinate plane. Point N is located 5 units to the left and 2 units down from point M. What are the coordinates of point N? All right, so remember how we were talking at the very beginning of this video, and I said anytime you're moving on a coordinate plane, uh, you always start at the origin. Well, remember, I told you, you always start at the origin unless what? Unless they give you another starting place. Well, for question number nine here, letter M is your other starting place. So for this one, we're not going to start at the origin. We're going to start at letter M, and we're just going to simply follow the directions that they gave us. Uh, so we need to go five units to the left. Here's the left of my screen. Here's the right of my screen. And if you don't know your left from your right, you remember hold up the two L's, 
The one that actually makes a letter L like you see in the alphabet, that's your left side. The other one, that would be the right side, okay? So that's your, determine your left and right there, friends. So we want to go five units to the left, so that direction. And then we want to go two units down. So we're going to go down. And that'll hopefully lead us to point M, or point N, I'm sorry. All right, so let's start at point M. We need to go five units to the left. Now, before we do that, look very carefully at your units, okay? We're jumping one here, I believe. I think we're just going to jump one here, okay? Yeah, because between zero and two, this would be one. Between two and four, three. Between four and six, that would be five. Um, so sometimes what they do here is that they'll have zero and then two boxes, one two boxes, two, two boxes, three. So you have to be very careful. Make sure the units that you're jumping match what you see here. Uh, for this one, we just have some missing numbers here. So we are still jumping just one box at a time. So it's gonna be okay for this one. All right, so letter M, five units to the left. So that's one, two, three, four, five, okay, and then two units down. So that's one, two, okay? So I'm gonna put it in a different color. So it looks like this green dot right there, that should be our point in. All right, so now I just need to figure out the, the ordered pairs and then we'll be good to go. So we start at zero here. We're gonna go to one. So one's gonna be X. And then we're gonna go up to what's halfway between four and six. That would be five. So it looks like point N should be at one comma five. Is that an answer choice? Yes, it is. It is letter A. Here we go. Alrighty. Okay, one more here, friends. Very good. Okay, Ooh, this is the big one. Okay, letter 10, or number 10, I'm sorry. Which statements about the corresponding terms in both patterns A and B is always true? So remember, corresponding, that means what did I do to A to get B, or what did I do to B to get A? It's the relationship between the two numbers side by side. It's not what did you do to all the A's, what did you do to all the B's, it's what I do to A to get B, or what did I do to B to to get A. They go together, okay? Uh, so I'm going to be honest. For me, it's easiest to see this written vertically. So I'm going to take this function table here, and I'm going to write it out vertical. It's just easier for my brain to recognize it that way. All right, so pattern A and B. When A is zero, B is zero. Uh, let's see. When A is five, B is 10. When A is 10, B is 20. When A is 15, B is 30. And then we can probably stop there. Uh, so really right off the bat, you probably do notice a pattern here for A and a pattern here for B. It looks like A, we're counting by fives. So for A, we are plus five. And then for B, we're counting by 10, so we're adding 10. Uh, so, you know, it's really good if your brain can start, you know, recognizing those things. But remember, it's not what's the rule for A and what's the rule for B. It's the corresponding relationship. So it's what did I do to, you know, A in order to get B? What did I do to the 5 to get to 10? Or what did I do to the 10 to get to 5? Uh, so let's kind of look over our answer choices here and see which one is true. So letter A. Each term in pattern A is two times, so two times, that means multiply by two, the corresponding term in pattern B. So if each term in pattern A is two times the term in pattern B, then that means the term in pattern A is bigger than the term in pattern B. And that's not what I see here. Five is not two times this 10 here, right? 
because five is too small. Now, if it was the opposite way, that would be true. It looks like, you know, if I do five times two, I get 10. That means 10 is two times bigger than five, which means the numbers in pattern B are two times bigger than A. But this says each term in pattern A is two times the corresponding term in pattern B, and that's not true because the terms in pattern A, are they're too small to be two times bigger the terms in pattern B. So that can't be true. All right, letter B. Each term in pattern A is one half, that means divide by two. Uh, each term in pattern A is one half the corresponding term in pattern B. Okay, so what that means is like, let's say A is three. If A is going to be half of whatever the corresponding number for B is, that means B here would have to be what? It would have to be six because three is half of six. If A was four, then that means B would have to be eight, right? Because four is half of eight. If A was 15, B would have to be 30, right? Because 15 is half of 30. That's what that means here. So is five half of 10? Yes, it is, because 10 divided by 2 is 5. Is 10 half of 20? Yes, it is, because 20 divided by 2 is 10. Is 15 half of 30? Yes, it is. So it does look like the terms in pattern A here, they are half the size of the terms in pattern B. So that's a pretty good answer choice. Uh, letter C, each term in pattern A is 5 times less than... Five times less than, there's no way, right? Because, yeah, that's just, that doesn't make any sense. Um, and then letter D, each term in pattern A is 10 times less than. Yeah, no way. So B is definitely your best answer here. Uh, so, you know, really the best course of action there is to read through your answer choices, test them out, see if they make sense. If they make sense, then just you know, check it with several corresponding values going down your function table um, to make sure that you do have the right one. And then, of course, once you found the right one, then there you go. All right, friends, so that's questions one through 10. Uh, hit me up on Dojo, Padlet, the Talking Points app, email, um, whatever you guys need. You know, I'm here. Uh, so that was questions one through 10. And the next video will be questions 11 through 20. See you later, friends. Thanks for joining today. I appreciate it. Y'all are awesome.